for the final time, welcome back to the ultimate Five Nights at Freddy's Iceberg. For those of you who are new here and haven't seen the first five parts, well, what what are you doing here? This is the last part, well, why would you just skip here? Anyway, if you haven't seen the first five parts, you should definitely check them out. They add a lot more context to this one, especially when touching upon previous concepts and thoughts. The link to them will be in the description. Once again, have to give credit to the FNAF Encyclopedia, Natter John, who created this iceberg and has helped me a lot in the creation of this video. I'm not going to waste any more time with this, so let's get into the iceberg. Early Glitch Trap Design In the files of Help Wanted, there is an unused early model for Glitch Trap, which is just a strangely textured model of Spring Trap. He's mostly gray and has, like, a stitch on him. This is most likely inspired by the electronic spring trap drawing at the end of the updated Freddy files. It was probably just a placeholder, but it's fully right for animations. Pizzeria When FNAF 1 was first released, the Help Wanted ad when you start a new game misspelled the word Pizzeria as Pizzeria with an A. This has since been patch. Summoning Nightmare Foxy in FNAF 4, if you shine your flashlight at the bed for 30 seconds, you'll be jump scared by Nightmare Foxy, regardless of his previous state. Toy Freddy's Foot In UCN, Toy Freddy's right foot will always appear in front of his stool, even when he isn't active. The only circumstance in which his foot will be there is if he gets a game over, although that could be because the stool itself is gone. This is most likely an error and Scott just forgot to remove Toy Freddy's foot. Nightmare's Brain this refers to how a nightmare suit is actually completely see-through. You most likely can't tell, but if I put a white background behind him, yeah, it's fairly obvious. Because of this, people have noticed that Nightmare has a brain. What this could represent is unknown. The creator of this iceberg, Nightmare John, believes that this means Nightmare is some sort of embodiment of the crying child's death. He believes this because the crying child's death is a result of his brain, specifically his frontal lobe, getting bitten by Fredbear. Nightmare, being a black version of Nightmare Fredbear, who's a Nightmare version of Fredbear, could be a way of representing how Nightmare himself is a dark reflection of the thing that killed the crying child, and the brain is a reminder of how he died. His theory makes a lot of sense, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's the reason. Help Wanted Box Art Used Fan Art This refers to a teaser on ScottGames.com. The teaser, which was a version of the box art of Help Wanted, showed Spring Bonnie and Funtime Foxy, among other characters. However, these two used fan models. Funtime Foxy's model was made by Gable Court, and Spring Bonnie's model was made by Pop Goes slash Kane Carter. This teaser was pulled from the website, and when it was re-uploaded, Funtime Foxy was using her official model, and Spring Bonnie was replaced by Nightmare Own. Scott took to Reddit to apologize for what had happened, while revealing that Steel Wool thought the fan designs were his. Slumberfish Turtle This refers to a cut asset in FNAF World. Files for a swimming turtle that were originally used in one of Scott's previous games, that being Slumberfish, exist in the game. Given that the files are grouped among the fish from Dee Dee's fishing hole, it's likely that the turtle was intended to be another catchable creature in the minigame with its own payout tier, or probably functional as an obstacle to prevent the player from catching a fish. Strangely, it isn't robotic like all the other fish. This might be the reason why it was dropped from the game. Five Nights at Freddy's The Untold Story This refers to the early name of the first FNAF novel, The Silver Eyes. Scott posted an early novel cover on his website with the title The Untold Story, this is most likely a placeholder, with the real name, The Silver Eyes, being uploaded as a teaser a few days later. Insanity Ending on Day 1 This refers to how to get the insanity ending in FNAF 6 on the first day. Instead of getting the egg baby and you know all that stuff, if you play the fruit punch while getting many jackpots, you can unlock it that way without even getting to the night section. Phantom Foxy Glitch This is a glitch that occurs if the player is jump scared by Phantom BB while Phantom Foxy is waiting in the office in FNAF 3. This will lead to Phantom Foxy standing in the office without jump scaring the player. Eventually, the game will correct itself and the jump scare will trigger. This glitch occurs because the game gets confused trying to figure out what to do with Phantom Foxy when Phantom BB jump scares the player, leading to the sprite of Phantom Foxy standing motionless until the game remembers what to do with him. It's likely Scott never expected a rare event like this to occur, so he never assigned a function to Phantom Foxy in this event, which is evident given that this is one of the few glitches in the series that never got patched. It's also possible for you to complete the night while he's frozen like this, but that's very unlikely and I can only find one video of it. Special Delivery VIP This refers to some unused graphics and special delivery, showing that a VIP service was planned for the game. 
What this service would have provided is a mystery, but in my opinion, it probably would have been similar to the Gold Pass in Mario Kart Tour. And if you play Mario Kart Tour or know about the Gold Pass, be happy it's not in this game because it's extremely aggressive with the microtransactions. Exotic Margarine This refers to an anniversary image of Exotic Butters, where the project file name is called Exotic Margarine. This might have meant that Exotic Butters' original name was Exotic Margarine, which is not as memorable, but... Phone Guy in Deltarune In the Undertale sequel Deltarune, there is a reference to Purple Guy. When you return home after your adventure with Ralsei and Susie, you get a chance to walk around the town and talk to the monsters inhabiting it. On the west side of town, you stumble upon a very humble looking pizzeria that has various mascots doing a promotion outside of it. One such mascot is a purple dinosaur wearing the head of Icy, a mascot character whose name is on the pizzeria. If you talk to another NPC, Burger Pants, he'll tell you about the co-workers wearing the mascot outfits. When he tries to describe the purple dinosaur, he says, Purple guy? Man, that guy, you gotta- a Actually, does that guy even work here? This is 100% a reference to FNAF, with the mascots and the pizzeria and all that. It's actually kind of sweet to see another classic indie developer pointing out FNAF. Crying Cupcake in the Chica's Party minigame in FNAF 3, you can access an area of black crying cupcakes with one of them chasing you. They can't kill you and the significance of them are unknown. Dreadbear in Hallway In an early screenshot of Curse of Dreadbear, Dreadbear was seen in the hallway level. He never appears in this level in the final game. Like the Burnt Frettles, people believe this was planned to be used in the hard mode but went unused because Curse of Dreadbear doesn't have a hard mode. FNAF 1 Scream Origin this refers to the FNAF 1 jump scare sound. The sound effect is known as X-Scream in the files. The origin for the sound is from a scene from a British movie, Insomnioid, where a woman gives birth to aliens. He yeah, yeah. Here's the original clip. And here's the FNAF sound effect. I don't know if this is at all related, but I'm pretty sure there's a Fazbear Fright story where someone gives birth to an alien, so I don't I don't know if that's related or just like a coincidence. Distorted Plushies In the files of Help Wanted, there are several unused models of the plushies which are heavily twisted and disordered. What these would have been used for is unknown. It's unlikely they were placeholders because they used the in-game models. It wouldn't make sense to use distorted models as placeholders and the final models were finished. Hanging Mangle This refers to the teaser on FNAFWorld.com, Scott's website that was made for FNAF World. The teaser, when brightened up, showed that what we thought was Adventure Mangle hanging, with the phrase, see what you've done, written at the bottom. Some people thought that this meant that Scott was in a depressed state, and while that wasn't true, it's still sad considering how Scott was having suicidal thoughts in the backlash to FNAF World. I'm happy he's doing better now, but back to the teaser. Mangle wasn't hanging, thankfully. She had the paddle ball I seen in the trailer in her mouth while the paddle part was being above screen. Plushie Prototypes Several prototypes exist of the official FNAF plushies, most notably from the sister location Wave by Funko. The outer plush had a different body, the baby plush had more detail on its hands, there was a Funtime Foxy plush with teeth, which was sewn alongside the final design for some reason, and the Bolora plush actually looked good! Funko isn't the only company that had prototypes for plushies. The company Good Stuff had prototypes for a plush of L Chip and Egg Baby. Unlike the other prototypes I mentioned, these two haven't yet to be released in their official form. The Egg Baby prototype plush is the only Egg Baby plush in existence, which makes it quite unique. Scanning for Glitches Scanning for Glitches refers to a rare, unexplained Easter egg in Curse of Dreadbear that occurs in the Danger Keep Out levels. I'm not gonna try and explain this one, so. Look for yourself. Many believe that this could be the developers of the Freddy Fazbear virtual experience trying to locate and or eliminate Glitch Trap, but that's just speculation. Number in Withered Chica's Mouth This refers to a rumor about Withered Chica in FNAF 2. People thought when she was in Party Room 2, she had a number in her mouth. I think it's an 8, but it could be a 6. 
This is most likely just a lighting coincidence, similar to when people thought they saw a cat animatronic in the prize corner or the thing in BB's mouth, which was mentioned earlier on the iceberg. So, once again, go check him out. Scott listens to Markiplier. This is a theory that Scott listens to the YouTuber Markiplier. Markiplier has said things in his videos that would seemingly go on to become official things in the next games. He called Bonnie Bonbon, who would later become a character. Oh, is that Mr. Bonbon coming out of his hidey hole? Mr. Bonbon came out of his hidey hole. He coined the names Golden Freddy and Purple Guy before they had become official. Purple Guy! He said that it would be neat to play FNAF 1 in VR, and later on, FNAF VR would become a thing in the form of Help Wanted. This would be like terrifying if you controlled the cameras with like an Oculus Rift or something. Oh my god. Because you just move your head back and forth. However, the most obvious example is when Markiplier was playing FNAF 2, and he said he didn't want to wake the baby, referring to the puppet. I'm gonna call it the baby because that's what that thing is. You don't want to wake the baby, don't let the music box run out and wake the baby. In the lead-up to FNAF 4's Halloween DLC, the Nightmare Yawn's teaser codename was Don't Wake the Baby JPEG. And if you recall, Nightmare Yawn is the night version of the puppet. Hmm? If you want to learn more about this, check out FNAF's video on this. Trick or Treat BB Jump Scare in the Trick or Treat minigame, Nightmare Balloon Boy was used as the jump scare for Balloon Boy Strangely. This is likely because BB did not already have a jump scare, however there's an unused animation of BB jump scaring the player. The reason why it was unused is unknown, but it's probably due to the fact that Steel Wool didn't find it scary. Using the mask and the flashlight at the same time In an early teaser for FNAF 2, the flashlight was shown to be used while the mask was on. I assume this was changed so Withered Fox it would be harder to repel. It's possible Scott felt the game would have been too easy if Withered Foxy could be repelled while the mask was on, and this would just allow people to leave the mask on all the time, aside from needing to wind up the music box. <laughs> Numbers Easter Egg This refers to an Easter Egg in Sister Location. It occurs when you hold the 0 and 1 keys in the Ballora Gallery. The purpose of this easter egg is unknown. The easter egg was actually discovered in 2021, a whole 5 years after Sister Location's release. Some people think it's a debug menu, some people think it was put in there intentionally, and we're overall just not sure what it's about. Golden Freddy on Night 2 On extremely rare occasions, and I mean extremely rare occasions, it's possible for Wither Golden Freddy to appear on Night 2 of FNAF 2. It's so rare that even putting a video online is scarce. Whether this is intentional or a glitch is unknown. Impossible good ending in FNAF 3 on Nintendo Switch. When FNAF 3 was initially released on the Nintendo Switch, it was impossible to teleport in the Shadow Bonnie minigame, making it impossible to get the true good ending. This was eventually patched, but it's still unknown what caused the glitch. 1993 Aurora Shooting. This is a dark topic, and if something like this might bother you, then you should skip ahead to the time on screen. I'll give you a few seconds. Alright. In 1993, at a Chuck E. Cheese in Aurora, Colorado, after hours, a man started shooting. The perpetrator, 19-year-old Nathan Dunlap, a further employee of the restaurant, was frustrated about being fired five months prior to the shooting and sought revenge by committing the attack. Dunlap entered the restaurant at 9 o'clock p.m. where he ordered a sandwich and played an arcade game. He then hid in a restroom at about 9.50 p.m. He exited the restroom after closing with a 25 caliber semiotic pistol. Dunlap first shot Sylvia Crowell, who was cleaning the salad bar. She was hit in the right ear and was severely wounded, dying the next day in the hospital. Ben Grant was fatally shot near his left eye as he was vacuuming. Colleen O'Connor was fatally shot through the top of her head. Bobby Stevens, the lone survivor of the shooting, was shot in the jaw. However, Stevens fell to the floor and played Den, hoping he wouldn't finish the job. Dunlap then forced Marge Kohlberg, the store manager, to unlock the safe. After she opened it, Dunlap shot her twice through the ears. Dunlap fled the scene with $1,500 worth of cash and game tokens he stole from inside the restaurant. He was arrested at his mother's apartment 12 hours later. Bobby Stevens, who had escaped through a back door, was a big contributor to Dunlap being arrested. This was a horrific tragedy and I hate having to bring it up, however some people think that these events are eerily similar to FNAF 1. The connection was first brought up by MathPat and several people believed it. He theorized that the animatronics and their behaviors lined up with the victims of the shootings. He also theorized that we play as the killer and that the game's events were our nightmare as we were on death row, 
much like the real life perpetrator. Now, this in my opinion is an extreme coincidence and is quite disrespectful comparing a fictional game about haunted bunny rabbits to a real life tragedy. One, five, seven, eight. In the background of Sister Location, you can sometimes hear a slowed down version of Baby saying the numbers one, five, seven, and eight in a random order. It is unknown what this means in the lore currently. This most notably plays in Circus Control, when offline, and under the desk. In FNAF AR, these numbers actually limit out around 8-bit baby when she haywires. Orange Spring Trap Mystery Mini This refers to how at Toy Fair 2016, when the FNAF Mystery Mini prototypes were being displayed, Spring Trap was... orange. How this could have happened is beyond me. What, did they see Golden Freddy's color and gave it to him? Assumed he wasn't green because of the green lighting in FNAF 3 and thought he was orange? There is no real explanation. However, I think the design of him is pretty interesting. Jason. This refers to how the picture of the creepy child face in UCN that's meant to represent Cassidy slash the vengeful spirit is actually a picture of Scott Cawthon's son, Jason. Scott has indeed confirmed this. I just can't find it anymore, but I, I swear it's true. Sister Location Trailer 2 When Sister Location's trailer came out, it was called Trailer 1, somewhat implying there would be a second one. However, Scott took to seem to say a second trailer would spoil too much of the game and that there wouldn't be one. In his interview with Docco, PJ Haywood, the voice actor for William Afton, confirmed that the intro to Sister Location was originally meant to be Trailer 2. German Funtime Freddy This refers to how Funtime's Freddy's voice was going to be German. His voice actor, Kellen Goff, shared some of these voice lines during an interview with GT Live. Oh, 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 oh. Hello, little children. Glad to see you back again. The voice is pretty amazing. However, I wouldn't say it's particularly scary. Lost FNAF 1 trailer. This refers to a uh, lost trailer for FNAF 1. The whole situation has been kind of a mess, so let me explain. It all starts with the first comment on the trailer of FNAF 1 on Scott's YouTube channel. This user, Walt Meets, says, I can sort of see why you changed the eyes from the last video. This meant there was a previous trailer. Someone on Twitter asked about it, to which he responded there was an original trailer which had a strong resemblance to the official one with a scarier endo and red eyes, which is most likely this endoskeleton. He also remembers a few gaming YouTubers making mention of it when it was still on Kickstarter. However, a Reddit user had used the Wayback Machine on Scott's Google Plus page and found three unwatchable videos. One of them was called Five Nights at Freddy's Gameplay, which is most likely the video on Scott's YouTube channel that might have had an upload error or something, similar to the Five Nights at Freddy's video which was most likely just the real trailer. However, there's one more called Five Nights. People assume that this Five Nights video was the lost trailer. However, Walmeet had posted another tweet where he said he was mistaken and that he was recalling the existing trailer. So then that wasn't the lost trailer, but then what is this first Five Nights video? It had to have been something. And that is unfortunately still lost. Unused section of Happiest Day. I'll be honest, myself and the creator of this iceberg, Nader John, are not too familiar with the unused section of Happiest Day. So we're just gonna go off what we've been told. Apparently, underneath the map of the Happiest Day minigame, there's a section taken straight from BB's Air Adventure. It's unknown why it was there, and may have been used similar to the balloon sections in the other minigames, but that's just speculation. Ice Cave. This refers to an unused music track for FNAF World that based on the name was probably going to be used in an ice theme area that got scrapped. Some believe it could have been used for an early version of Dusting Fields, which is very much possible, but considering that area is outdoors, the name Ice Cave wouldn't be very fitting. I honestly wish this track made it to the final games, it's honestly a really good track. I can't play it for obvious reasons, but I'll leave a link to the song in the description. Chica's Missing Eyes this refers to how when Bonnie leaves the show stage in FNAF 1, Chica's right eye disappears and doesn't reappear until she leaves the show stage. Why this happens is unknown, but it is most likely an error. Interestingly, in the video stage performance that Thiznum posted to promote FNAF Plus, Chica's right eye was actually broken and didn't move. This could be Thiznum referencing the event in the first game, but it could also just be a coincidence. And that is the end of the iceberg. Kind of. There will be a director's cut released soon, combining all six parts, with a special surprise at the end. These were quite difficult videos to put together, and if you like this video and want to see similar videos, please subscribe and ring the notification bell. 
I would once again like to thank Nair John for creating this iceberg as it was very informative. If you'd like to get notified when I upload, chat with other fans of the channel and overall have a fun time. Mm, fun time. That's ironic. Um, and you should join the channel Discord. We already have a great community and it's really fun. With a lot being said, I've been your host Little T. Sweet dreams.